Hello again. Automation Anywhere releases today a new challenge for this year's bot games. And in this video, I will show you my solution how you can solve this challenge by your own. So we have two routes here, which were set by Automation Anywhere. We need to launch the web page and click on the download spreadsheet button. So it is not allowed to use the pre-downloaded file in our automation. So are you ready? Let's jump in. Let's talk about the objective of this automation challenge. In this case, the first step we need to launch, as remember, this was one of the rules, launch the web page and then click the download spreadsheet here. So let's click this one to download this one. And we can have a look in this Excel spreadsheet. And what we need to do then is populate all the details which we will find in the spreadsheet, like first name, last name, email, city, the state, the clothing size, and the date of birth. Then click Add, and after all the details are populated from the spreadsheet, we click the Submit button. Let's investigate how the spreadsheet looks like. Let's open this one, so that we can see what is the content. Here we will see we have the column first name, last name, email, city, state, clothing size, and date of birth. Okay. We see the first name, last name, the other values in that spreadsheet. So let's go back to our control room and start with a new taskbot. We click on create new taskbot. Let's give this a name, bot games. Oop. Bot Games United Way Bay Area. Create the edit. Before we start with any action, let's start with the, or let's say, let's start with the basic error handler, or we outline our process here. As I have showed in the last video, we go to the, just type try and drag and drop the try catch inside and let's configure the catch block the first thing we need to do is assign the message variable which is a type of string we pick the sample string here down we need to assign the line number so we assign the number variable which is called sample number let's click save now we need to rename the variable to our purposes. Start with a sample number variable. Let's give this a name. So lowercase n for number and error line. Line. And we also re rename the string variable here. So let's edit this one as well. Let's do the lowercase s for string. And then call this one error message. Apply. Okay, we see the variables are named accordingly also in this action. We see here on the right. Then let's go back to our actions and type in the search bar box or a message box. We want to add in the catch block if an error occurs in our automation. So let's configure the message to display first we type the dollar sign lowercase n for the line number we click on the error line number then jump into the variable name before the closing dollar sign put the dot and as we saw in the last video we do the number to string action let's do a space hyphen space and let's add the error message okay save so now we are set with a try catch block and now let's high level let's say design the high level process of this automation so for this we will start with steps just type step and let's drag and drop over this step to the try block and the first step is launch the browser so we give this a name launch 
website. Let's call this one. Let's shrink this down. Then we need another step. This we will call download spreadsheet. Save. Bring down. Next, we need to loop through the spreadsheet. So let's add another step here. And we call this one a loop. Spread sheet. Save. And last but not least, the final step is click the submit button. So let's name this click submit. Save. Okay. Let's start with the launch website. So we expand the step here and go to the browser action which we will find here and we add the open command drag and drop to the step launch website here we choose new window and as browser we pick the google chrome and we can copy paste the url from here and as always, I will put the URL in the video description down below that you can pick it from here, with copy paste, and you are good to go. So let's paste it in here. Click save. So this first step launches the website. And the second step, we need to download the spreadsheet. So let's click on the step and we type in here the capture command capture and we pick the recorder capture let's drag and drop to the download spreadsheet step then we click on the browser refresh the windows then we select the humanitarian response challenge page let's click on this and we need to capture the object on that website. We click capture object here. Let's scroll up and we will hover over the button download spreadsheet. So we need to make sure that only the button is captured. Now we have the red thin outline around this button. Left mouse click now. Okay, let's go back to our control room. And now we need to specify what we want to do here. So we want to do, as an action on that object, we want to do a click. Select click, save. Okay, so the first steps are done. As you know, these was the rules. First launch the website and then click the download spreadsheet button. And before we go any further, let's try and see if this works. The first two initial steps, so we close the window, the tab, close, and we will also close the spreadsheet and delete this one to see this is downloaded to our downloads folder. Let's run this automation for the first time and see if it works OK. So the challenge page will be loaded now in a new window. That's perfect. And let's see if the download button is clicked by our automation. 
And yes, it is clicked. We see on the right upper corner that this file was downloaded. Let's go back to our automation. Perfect, close. Let's go to our downloads folder. And we see it is downloaded successfully. Now let's right click on this Excel spreadsheet. Then we choose properties. We can go to the security tab over here. And then let's copy and paste the object name. So we do copy paste here. Because now we can use this in our if statement, because I want to add an if statement after the download spreadsheet to uh, wait until the file is downloaded. So how this works, let's go to the if statement, just type if. Let's go to the if package and drag and drop the if package after the recorder action. Okay. And then we need to specify the condition here in the if statement. So we will pick file exists. Let's pick this one. And here we can now copy and paste the file path. Just to copy and paste. So as you see, it is in my downloads folder and the file is named like this. And now we can specify how long we want to wait in seconds until this condition is true. So we just type 120 seconds, for instance, so two minutes. Let's click Save. So this will basically wait until the file is downloaded completely. So this is a file check here. And now we can put a command here. So this is an Excel file, as we know. Or we can type Excel. And here, in this case, I want to use the Excel basic command. Let's go to the Excel basic package and drag and drop the open action into if the file exists. Okay, and now we choose here the file path. We choose desktop file. Click on desktop file and now do the same. We paste the file name and the path, so the full file name path. And as, let's jump into the file again. Downloads. Let's click see the content again and we see here in this file we have a header so let's go back to our bot because here we need to specify the cheat contains a header so let's click this option and we can use only the read only mode because here we are just using read only we don't save any values to the spreadsheet we just uh, select the read-only mode. Let's give it a local session. And the local session is default. We can click Save. And we are ready to go with our loop. So let's click into the step loop spreadsheet. And we go back to our search bar and we will type loop because now we need to loop to all the data inside our spreadsheet so let's drag and drop the loop action in here and here we want to specify to the iterator not n for n times we choose here the Excel basic, we can see here, for each row in a worksheet. So let's click this one. And then we have some more actions to configure. So, or let's say options to choose. I want to loop through all the rows, just to show you specific rows you can choose or cell range, but we want to loop through all the rows. 
the session name is default. So this is why I put the session name before in the Excel basic open command, the same as default. So this is matching. And what we need to assign here, we need to assign a current value to a variable. And I recommend here to use the record variable. So what is a record variable? So every time we will iterate through our data and our spreadsheet, the row which we are currently on will be written into that record. So let's go to our spreadsheet. Let's estimate we are on, on row two. So we have then first name assigned Omar, last name assigned Mekirach, the email, the city, the state, the clothing size, and the date of birth. And on the next iteration, we have assigned her first name, last name, and so on. Let's go back, click on record, and we need to create a record variable now. So on the right side, create variable here. And this is named Excel row. So we can use this as Excel row. Just type uh, lowercase r for record. Create and select. And then click Save. OK. Now we have that. And what you want to do now, when we have opened the spreadsheet, we need to add all the captures from the website. So let's go to the actions over here and let's go to the recorder package down here. Let's click the recorder package. Oops, it's wrong. Recorder, not record. So and add the capture inside the loop. Okay, so we now choose the browser again, refresh the windows, as always. Then we need to click the Humanitarian Response Challenge. Let's click this and start with our first capture. So let's scroll down. Now we want to hover over the first name. This needs to be populated. Left click. OK. Let's go to the action to tag on that object. Here we want to set the text. And then we need to specify which text we want to populate. And here, when we go to the insert value, let's click on this. Let's click on the drop down. And now you see we have the string here and also we can choose the record variable which we called r lowercase r for record excel row let's pick this now and now you see you have two more options so now you need to specify uh, the record by index or the record by name and in this case for the first name we have column headers so we can use the column headers here. So let's copy paste the first name column and let's set by name and copy paste first name. Yes, insert. Click save. And now you see how this is looks like. So we have the dollar sign, the record Excel row, and then we have inside the curly brackets, we have the first name. So this is the column name. OK, but we need to do some more captures. So let's right click on the three dots here. Copy action. Right click, uh, we'll click on three dots again. Paste after action. And let's choose recapture object. So here we need the last name. Let's capture the last name. We do the same, so a set text. But instead of first name, here we need to check in our file, which we need to here. This is last name, so we copy last name, column name. Let's click inside the double quotes. Let's get rid of first name, paste. 
you know, we have weird white spaces in here. So now it's correct. So last name, click save. Then we do the copy action. No, don't need the copy action, just paste after action. Of course, we need another capture here. This is the email. Let's hover over the email field. Left click. And what's the column name here? Email. So let's go here. Let's copy email. Column name. Let's get rid of the first name here. Paste, email, save. And we have to paste another one after this one. Let's recapture the object. Then we need to populate the city. We click on the city. Check our column name here, the city. So let's copy paste city. Populate it here, save. And let's do another capture, paste after action, recapture object. Then we need to select state. So let's hover over this field here, left click. And now we need to specify an action to take on an object. So here we choose select item by text. And here, which item you want to select. So let's insert the value here. Then we choose the record row again. So this record variable, you stick with the by name, by column name. So let's check the name. So it is just state. We copy paste state. State, yes, insert, save. Okay, next one. We need another capture, paste after action. Let's scroll up, recapture action, the object for the closing size. And here it is a bit different. So that is, we can choose here the radio buttons. So let's choose the first radio button, which is clothing size of S. Left click. And before we go ahead, let's capture the next one, based after action. And let's capture the clothing size for size M. Click here. And why I'm doing this? Because I want to see if I find some pattern inside that clothing size. So when we scroll down with the object properties, we see here some values which are captured with that object. And when we take a closer look on the HTML ID, or the DOMX path, we will see we have here a clothing size hyphen S and as well the input at ID clothing size hyphen S. Okay, let's check on the M1 and we see here it is the same. So we have the clothing size hyphen M and as well with the DOMX path. So, and now instead of capturing all the three captures by its own and adding some if statements, we can just use the one capture here. So let's get rid of the last one. Let's do choose remove action and let's specify an action to take on that object. As we now detected the pattern here, let's just do select save. So we want to select that radio button, but when we look in our spreadsheet again, the closing size will be changing 
record row by row. So the first is S, then we have M, L, M, M, and so on. So let's go back to our bot. And what we can do here now is um, go to the normx path value. And instead of this S at the end, we can delete this S, this lowercase s. And what we can insert here, we can insert a var value as well. So let's pick our Excel row again by name. And then let's copy paste the column name. This is closing size. Copy. Let's paste here. Closing size. Yes, insert. Just click save. And now we have clothing size hyphen the value we will pick in our record row. So the first one is S. As I showed, the next one is M. Okay. And now let's go to the properties here. Let's expand it here. And we can deselect some options because the DOMX path has a unique ID here. So it is best practice to deactivate the other properties. So we can disable the HTML tag because we have the input specified here as well as the HTML ID. The HTML has frame, the radio you can deselect path you can deselect the HTML name and the HTML frame source. So let's deactivate this here. So we just left with the DOMX path with a unique ID. Let's click save here. And then we have a last capture. So we paste this last capture action after this one. Let's recapture the object. And we need to capture the date of birth. Left click. And here we need the same set text, but not first name. Let's go into our spreadsheet. It is date of birth. So let's copy this one. Let's populate it here. Date of birth, save. Okay. <clears throat> and the last step we need here, the last capture in every loop, we need the need to click the add button. So let's hover over the add button, left click. Let's select an action to take, click, save. <clears throat> so now inside our loop we have every capture so the first name the last name email city the excel row with the state the select radio button for the closing size capture for date of birth and the last action to take inside that loop is the to click the add button Okay, and then in the last step, we need to click the submit. So we can expand this here. We can add the final capture inside the click submit. Let's click on browser, refresh the windows, choose the humanitarian response challenge page, capture object, and hover over the submit button, left click. And we select here the action to take, click, save. So, and this should be our code for now. Let's try to run our automation. So let's close all the files and make sure to delete the file inside the downloads folder. So we'll delete this one. And we need to also close the challenge page. So let's close this here. 
and try to run this full automation and see how it goes. The challenge page is launched. And the automation will click the download spreadsheet button. If it works correctly. And then we will wait with the if statement for 120 seconds for the file download. So this is downloaded. And you see we specify all the values. And oops, we will see that the automation now is stuck at the closing size capture because we saw all the other values are populated and now our try catch block will show us oh we have a problem on line 15 with a radio button unable to find radio search criteria did not match okay so let's go back to our bot Let's click on stop here. So we stop the current run. Click close the message box. And as we saw line 15. So let's click on line 15. And let's go to our object properties again. In this capture. And what we see here. This makes, I think, for a new um, automation developer, some headaches maybe <laughs> if you have, uh, if you haven't um, these kind of um, knowledge. So the closing size, hyphen S. So when you go back to our spreadsheet, we will see here that the closing size is capitalized. So it's a capitalized S M L. And in this case, in the DOMX path or the HTML ID, this lowercase s. So we need to tweak our code a bit. So let's go to the DOMX path again. And after the closing size, right before the closing dollar sign, we will add dot and type low. And when we type low, we have here this option string lowercase. Let's choose this one. Let's make the screen a bit bigger. You can see the hole now. So we have the Excel row closing size and we convert it on the fly to string lowercase. So this should fix our error in this automation. So let's click save. And close Excel file again. Let's go to our downloads folder, delete that file, close the web page. And now let's run our automation again. Now, the moment of truth with our small modification works fine with a lowercase. So as I said, this is a bit tricky because this is case sensitive. So I think some people um, are having some headaches with this kind. Yeah, the clothing size has worked now, as we saw. The same with M, worked fine. Yeah, seems to be okay. So S, M, L, every radio button was picked successfully now. Let's wait for all of the 10 entries in this spreadsheet. 
to be placed. And yay, we solved the challenge. Okay, perfect. Let's click this button and go back to our code because I forgot to add one last action. So what we should do in this automation, go to Excel. Excel basic package and we should add the close action before the cl click submit button or afterwards it's up to you i put it beforehand but i will deselect these save changes because we don't write anything to our code uh, to our spreadsheet save and this should be the modification the last modification in this automation solution and we are done with this one. Yes, we solved the challenge. If you like this video, I would appreciate if you give this video a like and a subscription. And I hope I will see you in the next video. Bye.